Hello YouTube viewers, this is Zaxter99 again with another product review of another digital purchase I've made off of Amazon.com. This time it's the Manhattan Products Digital Power Supply Tester. This is uh, a tool that you can use to test power supplies that power your desktop computers. Um, this wouldn't be for a laptop power supply but only for the desktops. And this is a pretty nice unit it can save you a lot of time and trouble and guesswork um, out of checking power supplies and see if they went bad. And this little unit costs about $30 on Amazon right now. Um, and again, it's a Manhattan product. I purchased this about a year and a half ago. And I've tested literally dozens of power supplies uh, with this unit uh, successfully. Now, I want to show you the unit here. Uh, I apologize that this the video camera that I have is just not that good. Uh, not high quality and I have to get a lamp here uh, just to provide extra light even though this room is pretty well lit. Um, this is a product right here and it uh, it's just the black unit itself that, that comes. Just like you'll see right here uh, on the picture on Amazon it has a cable connected to it but all, you're, all you get is simply the the uh, black box here doesn't have any power cables or anything doesn't have any cables at all because all the cables you'll plug into it come right from your power supply that you're testing now what I've done for this particular instance is I've bought a garage sale computer tower right here had a hard drive in it paid about ten dollars for it which I get a pretty good deal because it had two gigs of RAM and looking here it had a 250 gig hard drive um, inside of it which I've already tested and it's good um, so you know definitely got a good deal but the, the uh, computer won't power on or powers onto a black screen so to, so the guy said so we're gonna check the power supply out and see if it's any good and I'm gonna show you on this video exactly how you do that now when you get this power supply tester you're gonna want to take the 20 pin connector from your power from your um, power supply and if it has an additional 4 pin connector uh, separate uh, that goes to the 20 or 24 pin power uh, slot on your motherboard you'll take those and you'll put them right into the right side here if your power supply only has a 20 pin connector and some of them do then you won't have this yellow part down here you will just have this part and you'll plug it in right at the top and it'll only fit one way so um, but that's where that would go and then over here, I don't know if you can see, it has exact and a diagram to show you exactly where you'll connect any of your 12 volt connectors. Um, this will be the 8 pin connector uh, or a 4 pin connector, which a lot of motherboards nowadays just have the 4 pin that plugs into a separate spot on the motherboard. And then it also has a 6 pin tester right here, which will test your 6 pin power supply cables that go to video cards. That's specifically what those are for down here at the bottom you'll have a uh, an old style uh, hard drive power connector with the pins and that's just that that's uh, when you have this power supply actually has both that's when you have these kind of connectors you can test those out for your power supply and on the top of the power supply tester that little slot right there I don't know if you can see it on this uh, crummy digital camera but um, that's where you'll test uh, these SATA connectors that go to your hard drives, the newer hard drives. So what you'll do is you also want to make sure that you're supplying a load on this power supply because anytime you're using a power supply on your computer, it's going to have a load on it. It's going to have the CPU. It's going to have hard drives, which have you know the motor spin and, and provide a load. So testing it blank with no load uh, is kind of silly. It's kind of like, you know, seeing how many, uh, you know, uh, weight curls I can do, you know, with a two ounce bag of chips or something. I mean, I, mean, I could go all day long, but when you give me a little workload, like 20 pounds in the dumbbells, um, I'm going to significantly slow down. And that's what you want to check, if that makes sense. I'm just kind of winging it here and trying to give my best description. I'm sorry I'm not real technical. Uh, and I don't know all the the lingo for all this stuff. I just kind of know how it works. So you do want to provide a load 
and I'm going to provide a load with a hard drive that came in this computer. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take the, this is a SATA drive that I got in this thing, so I'm going to take one of my SATA cables and I'm going to plug it in. Excuse my camera work while I try to do everything one-handed here, but the camera will be all over the place and I do apologize. I need to buy a cameraman I guess. Okay. So I've got the power going to the hard drive. I should feel it spinning when I power it on. And that's going to provide my load. As you can see the cable is coming from this power supply. And you'll want to connect this main power and you'll want to connect one of the powers over here initially and then you'll want to put it under a load with at least one hard drive and make sure the power supply is plugged in and I have the switch turned off so I'll turn the switch on at this time I hear my power supply tester beep twice which is a good sign I fill the hard drive make sure it's spinning it is and I look down at my power supply tester this is where this digital camera providing my video camera is going to be real spotty and I apologize for the horrible picture but here it's going to show you the voltages it shows you plus 5 volt up here in small letters so it can be you know plus or minus 5 percent and this is the actual reading 5.2 here it says plus 12 volts since I don't think you can read that here and it's 12.5 it says plus 3.3 uh, .3 volts up in the upper right and that's exactly what it is 3.3 .3. Here is another, your 12 volt uh, tester, 11.9, 12 volt set of secondary 12 volt tester, 12.5, which is intolerance, uh, 5.2, and then PG uh, signal here gives a millisecond reading. And that's basically showing you milliseconds. I guess it's a ping on how long the uh, power takes to go from the power supply to, you know, through the wires and to your motherboard. Um, I read that the tolerance on that is like, anywhere from 100 to 900 basically you know you just want to make sure that it's not taking too long and that's within uh, within tolerance now if any of these readings here are not within tolerance this power supply tester is going to tell you which one is bad and it's going to say either low or high with two L's and two H's or whatever and it's going to sit there and flash and the whole unit will sit there and beep at you and I'll show you exactly how that, that works because I'll hook it up wrong just so that it beeps, just so you'll kind of see what's what's going on. But what you'll want to do uh, is you'll want to test both of these first, and then what you can do is you can plug in all of your different cables coming from your power supply. You could plug in all of your um, pin connectors to the bottom and check every one of them to make sure every one of them is working properly. Okay. Chances are they are. If one's working, they probably all are, but you can check every single cable uh, and every single SATA cable and make sure that they're all working. So you can check them one by one. Now what you'll want to do though, if you have this or if you buy this, is you'll only want to check one at a time. So you'll want to put, don't like put in a, SAT, uh, a pin here and a SATA up here. You only want to check one of them at a time. So you'll want to power it off first, power the power supply off, and then you'll want to go ahead and connect one either here or here and check it um, or you can go ahead and plug in take this out and plug in your four pin over here and check that or you can take this out and plug in your six pin and check that um, but you never want to plug everything in at once or this thing's going to um, evidently it won't give you accurate readings so you want to just do one at a time so I'm going to go ahead and pause it real quick I'll plug in a unit and I'll show you the load I supply um, in a moment Okay, now I've got the bottom connector connected with a 4-pin power connector from the power supply. I'm going to go ahead and restart the power supply, turn on the switch. I've still got my load up here. It beeps twice again to let me know. And again, I have all my readings. All of them are within tolerance, so this particular pin uh, is good. Now, chances are that all of these pins are going to be fine. Before I pull this out um, and check another one, like a SATA, I'll want to power it off again and go ahead and pull that out and 
plug in a SATA and I'll do that right now. I'll be right back. And as you can see, we now have a SATA plugged in at the top from the hard, I mean from the power supply. And we will turn our power supply back on. Again, readings are all good for that particular connector. And again, for the main power from this power supply, this power supply is actually good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause the unit. I'm going to hook this thing up wrong and show you what happens if you actually have um, a bad reading or you have it hooked up wrong. And I'll explain that in just a second. Okay, what I've done here is I've simply removed the left side uh, connection. I don't have anything plugged in over here, so I'm not going to get my second 12 volt test. And at this point, um, it's going to give me a constant beep showing I have no 12 volt uh, connected. But if I did have one of my 12 volts connected over here and I got this beep, then I would know that I had a bad reading. Um, so we can we can pretend that I have that connected and I'll show you what happens if you do have a bad reading. So if you look at it now, it's actually improperly connected because I don't have that 12 volt connected. But this is what it's going to do um, if you do have it wrong, and see how that LL is showing you that that particular 12 volt reading is low. So if I did have this right left hand 12 volt connector connected, and I was getting this reading, then I would know that I had a bad power supply because that particular it shows you exactly what reading is low. Um, you know, if uh, if your PG you know uh, power supply power good reading here was low, if that delay was too high, for example, that would be probably HH at you, and it would continually beep. So this is just because I don't have this connected. So that's why it's beeping, but this is what this unit will do if anything um, is bad. So that's how to properly use this um, power supply tester. It's very easy, as long as you follow directions and you don't freak out if you got it connected wrong and think that your power supply is bad. You know, obviously this is a good power supply, um, I just don't got it connected all the way, and that's why it's beeping. So hopefully this helps somebody else out that does computer work or wants to test their own power supply, um, you know, before using it, because it is important that you use. Um, it is important that you use a good power supply. I never, when I build computers, I build them myself. I never trust, you know, name brands that I've never heard of, like this Allied. Um, it might be a good brand. I've just never heard of it, but. Um, I always go with the top brands like Thermaltake and Corsair and, you know, that kind of high-rated brand. Um, you know, you can buy these power supplies really cheap, but if they go out, they can cause, you know, a lot of damage to your computer, your motherboard, your memory, um, integral uh, components of your computer. So really not worth it to save a few bucks to put these cheap power supplies in. I always say that that's one of the most important things to buy if you're building a computer is to buy a good power supply. And if you're going to be working on computers at all, this is an essential tool and a very highly recommended tool um, to use. Um, I can't say anything for other brands of power supply testers. I know there's cheaper ones out there. There's probably a lot more expensive than $30 ones. But this one here has done the job well for me uh, continually and uh, doesn't. I don't think it's ever given me um, a misread. So that's my review of this Manhattan Power Supply Tester. I've not only reviewed it, but I think I've showed you how to properly use the tester because I can tell you right now, these things do not come with good instructions. Uh, from what I've read, the other brands also have really poor um, instructions on how to use them. I think that maybe anybody that knows what they're doing should probably know what they're doing without you know, having to read an instruction manual. But um, if you don't know what you're doing, kind of like you know, I didn't know a whole lot when I first bought this, uh, I was kind of up in the dark for a while and until I figured it all out. But anyway, that's my review of the Manhattan Power Supply Tester. It's on Amazon for about $30. Uh, if you do any kind of computer work, I, again, I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching this video. And signing off.